Shashi Tharoor seems to be all set to fight the elections for Congress president. He met Sonia Gandhi and if reports are to be believed, then Sonia Gandhi has given him the go-ahead to contest. Now, why should you and I care about that? Uh, it's unlikely that Shashi Tharoor would win against a Gandhi family nominee unless they actually back him ultimately. Uh, the reason why it's important is because Shashi Tharoor represents a particular side of the Congress which is actually polar opposite of what Rahul Gandhi stands for. And there, I'm talking about economic policies. If Rahul Gandhi is uh, notably anti-big business, if, he, if his rhetoric has largely been pro-working class, Shashi Tharoor's is exactly the opposite. And how can we know this? We know this from whatever Shashi Tharoor has written over the years. And I'm going to start with the first thing that Shashi Tharoor became famous for, which is a novel that he wrote in 1989 which was uh, called The Great Indian Novel. And why did he call it The Great Indian Novel? Because it was a kind of take on the Mahabharat, uh, where the characters from the Mahabharat were taken, some of the story plots were taken from the Mahabharat, but they were fitted into contemporary India, from the national movement onwards to about 1984, when Indira Gandhi was assassinated. And it is interesting that Shashi Tharoor, he hadn't joined the Congress at that time, names the Jawaharlal Nehru character Dhritarashtra and he says essentially that why is he Dhritarashtra because he is blind in his idealism and he has no idea what empirical reality is all about and what about the daughter the daughter is called Priya Duryodhani now note that the opposition is called Pandavas and the Congress is called Kaurav and the opposition leader, the leader of the opposition, of the Pandavas, uh, Yudhishthir, is actually a Moraji Desai character. These are interesting things to look at. And in fact, if you look at Ved Vyas himself in this thing called VVG, now that seems to be a combination of several people who were part of this Congress syndicate or those who were opposed to the leftward shift or the socialist shift of the Congress from the time of uh, Nehru himself. It could be a combination of C. Rajagopalachari and Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy. This is a, these are important indicators. But let's look at what Shashi Tharoor has to say about the Indira Gandhi character's policies. And this is interesting because he's talking about bank nationalization. Let's look at it. Today we all realize what some of us had realized even then, that nationalization, which is bank nationalization, only means transferring functioning and successful institutions from the hands of competent capitalists to those of bumbling bureaucrats. Now, this is what he has to say about bank nationalization. What does he have to say about Nehru's economic policies? We don't know that from the great Indian novel, but Shashi Tharoor wrote a biography of ne Nehru, a largely sympathetic biography of Nehru uh, in 2003. And this is what he had to say about Nehru's policies. He basically called Nehru's insistent on planning and he called it planning with a capital P which, which he believed had become a fetish and a dogma in Nehru's time. He said that it actively impeded rather than facilitated the country's development. And that even the achievements of uh, what were known as the achievements of Nehruvian socialism which would be uh, the large dams that were built, the IITs, the steel plants he said that all this could have been could have come through the private sector and that most of india's public sector industries were so inefficient that the country would actually have been better off without them and he criticizes nehru for having this uh, mentality of being opposed to capitalism and not seeing it as an emancipatory force which one presumes uh, shashi tharoor sees it as but rather as something that keeps the third world subjugated that he, Nehru was a protectionist and, he, and that was bad for India. That is what led to what he pejoratively calls the Hindu rate of growth. And he approvingly quotes a very pro-market and anti-Nehruvian socialism, uh, anti-socialist uh, economist Jagdish Bhagwati on this. So that is what we see directly from uh, Shashi Tharoor's ideas on the economy. And this is in, important here because Shashi Tharoor also in uh, uh, raised a parliament question recently in which he said that uh, the government should allow lateral entry of private sector managers into the bureaucracy, into the IAS, because that would cross-pollinate and make it better. And also that 
there should be mandatory temporary postings of government employees to private organizations and international agencies apparently because those are more efficient they're better and that would make the uh, you know the bumbling bureaucracy work well so very clearly shashi tharoor is pro capital pro uh, private sector pro market and anti government anti state uh, intervention in the economy and this is what is crucial as far as the congress party goes because shashi tharoor's victory in that would mean uh, an unlikely victory would mean that the congress party would take a very strong line against what it has been doing till now and take a pro corporate pro market line it has been ambivalent on pro market but it has generally tended to be under rahul gandhi anti big business anti monopoly capital and definitely much more pro farmer pro worker than it had been under manmohan singh and i am going to end this with one more important uh, thing that we see in shashi tharoor which is his cultural conservatism and this came through during the sabri mala uh, controversy where tharoor took a very careful line he decided to say that he is on the side of the majority of people in kerala who oppose the entry of women into temples because he said that uh, it's all very well for liberals to say that this is false consciousness and that women are supporting this because they are th there's a sort of stockholm syndrome because of which they are caught in the conservatism but he said that when you disturb the beliefs of worshipers you violate a space beyond reasoning so this is the thing that tharoor represents he represents a particular kind of uh, conservative right wing english speaking elite enlightenment discourse which we see in the west and that is what he represents and therefore the so called lutians elite might like him the question is whether the congress can afford to have a thururian uh, turn away from what the nehru gandhi is represent that's the show today keep watching news click subscribe to our channel like this video and share it as well